Center, riding the marches. Bob Denver Walker gives some of his impressions on his first visit to the Hoyt Common Riding. It's six o'clock in the morning, and up the hip now, the country road outside the border town of Hoyt, 15 or it could be 150 horsemen of full gallop, commence those three eventful days commemorating the 450 year old custom of common riding. But it is far more than that. These riders, coming pell mell out of the early morning mist, booted and spurred and egged on by cheering spectators lining the road, are all cheery. Native born men of white, married men in the first wave, the young blood or talents led by their diverse stand bearer supporters, following hard upon their heels. It is he who carries the flag in his wild dance to their hallowed meeting place in a farmyard barn they call the hut at St. Bernard's. Strange that it should not be the other side of what that form so, because according to tradition, it was there in 1514, the year after the Battle of Flodden, when the chivalrous James IV perished with the crowd of his fighting men, that a band of plunderers from Hexham across the border were routed by a handful of youths from White. They returned from their victory, bearing aloft the captured English tenants. So while the rising sun is still young and many can't search to the bed, the hut rings to the singing of 360 men packed out with him, the party find themselves at half past six in the morning with generous draughts of rum and milk, and they give fervent voice to many patriotic songs and loyal speeches. <laughs> Friday will know no division from 
battery and be loaded. This day, oak leaves will be worn in the lapel of the jacket to symbolize druidic origins in heaven's in this ancient ritual. Once again, the great prison riders charged at full gallop up the at Nauf, led by the chorus bearing the now buff flag. And again, there is a convivial gathering at the hut, not only to fortify themselves with rum and milk, but to partake of the curds and cream repast. Another symbolic observance, since the shard milk represents the food carried by the original burgesses in their saddlebags when riding the boundary. Garbed now in a green riding jacket, ruffled and in stock and white breeches, the red sash across his chest. The comet now speaks to the gathering with an assurance born of a growing experience. Last night, I received into my hands your ancient banner, well and truly bust. I was charged by you, Brother Sanderson, to see that I carried it around the marches as has been done for centuries past. It was a tremendous trouble to leave the riders at the next house this morning. And no comrade has ever been further to bear and hide the banner blue. I hope that theories in and out will have the happiest of common writings and that when I have written the marches this morning, they will be as proud as I feel now of Fonic, the great afternoon among the hills. The recorded must, of course, be a young man of considerable stamina. The further rides to outline parts of the corridor to be made. He had to be present at great meetings at Point Moore. Presentations had to be made and received. Official breakfasts, dinners, and luncheons attended. Speeches made and heard. And to cap it all, the ball of the town hall, where at midnight, the cornet wheel is danced by the elegantly gowned ladies and the formally dressed gentlemen, whose duty is to not be said to have ended until the ancient custom of singing cheery bus at the summit of the lotus dawn has been observed. But deep within this overflowing program of functions, there is the high duty which has ruled the observance of common writing for centuries. This is clearly expressed in the statutory language of the proclamation declared by the ballot officer from the balcony of the council chamber the day before. Therefore, if any nobleman, gentleman, or others, having lands lying contiguous or adjacent to the said committee, shall find themselves raised of prejudice in any sort by these days' marchings, we are hereby required to state their objections thereto to the provost, billies, and council of the said borough within 40 days from this date. And who could remain unmoved when on the Saturday the cornet, flanked by his right and left hand men, enters the council chamber to return the flag to the cross? High though the voices may sound, in tears there is no change. Brother Sanderson, charged by you on Saturday night, I have written the lovely marches of the committee of the town and found them in good order. Brother Sanderson, I have found fault to you and sight and in stain. Thank you, Colonel. I see that you have returned the flag unsullied and unstained, as charged by me at the Carabosses on Thursday night. And I congratulate you on the success of your courtship. Now, would you be good enough to display the flag on the balcony for the last time? Thank you, Colonel. Say what? Say then. The expression of the common writing has been fulfilled. Outside in the street. The saxophone band plays the invocation. My name is Chuck Landlords. Thirty-four years ago, I was a corner. From 1948 to 41, I was provost of Boyd. What you have just heard is the emotional conclusion to one of the most faithfully observed ceremonies in Scottish history. It justifies the injunction in Hogg's eternal song, Kiribas, ye Kirion, sons of heroes slain at war, imitating Lord and Roman, I defend your rights and call. Walker was giving some of his impressions on his first visit to the Hoyt.